Israel's defense minister says troops have been withdrawn from southern Gaza, raising fears that their next target could be Rafa. Well, the news comes as the Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron says that Britain's support for Israel is not unconditional following the killing of seven aid workers. Well, joining us now is Sun columnist Rod Little. Uh, Rod, really good to talk to you as ever. Thank you. Um, this is moving very quickly, actually. It moved very fast over the weekend as well. We, we sort of have heard a change in tone from the government. Rishi Sunak saying the nation remains appalled. He talks about an immediate humanitarian pause and a long-term sustainable ceasefire. Cameron's words are really interesting, aren't they, where he says that Britain's support and backing of Israel is not unconditional. That's a barbed warning. It is a barbed warning, and I think Israel has played its hand very badly recently. Um, it had an awful lot of goodwill from the West um, and beyond the West uh, on October the 7th. But that goodwill has, has I think, uh, gradually evaporated, um, partly for reasons which are not the fault of Israel. I mean, uh, if you accept that Israel has to uh, try to address the problem which it has, which is rooting out Hamas, then obviously people are going to be killed and some of those are going to be innocent people. Um, but it has it has perhaps stretched the patience of the West completely to the degree that for the first time in its existence, it could be in a position where it has where it's effectively isolated. Uh, all the, all the crises which Israel has gone through in the last uh, seventy years, uh, it has it has managed to have support at some point. Whether it be the Soviet Union, for example, uh, when when the state was set up, whether it be uh, the Western countries. Uh, and America, particularly uh, during the uh, uh, 1967 conflict and also the Yom Kippur conflict and also the terrorism against uh, the Palestinian Liberation Organization during the 1980s. There was always British, American, European support for Israel. And <clears throat> that has gradually been winnowing away. And that is a very dangerous thing for Israel. It cannot exist isolated. How much do you think the hostages have been forgotten in all of this, Rod. Um, we saw protests at the weekend, families of hostages even laying the blame at Israel's feet, saying that actually if they'd acted sooner and agreed to one of these <coughs> hostage release deals, that um, the man that was found dead on Saturday might actually still be alive. I think it's... Uh... I think it's a salutary lesson that we all ought to remember, and particularly the Hamas groupies on the left in this country, who continue demanding a ceasefire and continue demanding from the river to the sea, or to remember that Hamas has still to give up many, many hostages, most of those hostages suffering indescribable torment. Uh, as, as the days go on. And that has been forgotten a little bit. And it is one of the justifications, of course, that Israel has for pushing forward. Hamas doesn't respond to niceness. It does respond to violence uh, because it's a terrorist organisation. Um, so, yeah, I, I think there is a problem that we, uh, particularly David Cameron, I, I mean, I think David Cameron's appointment as Foreign Secretary was probably the worst appointment of it, it even exceeds Liz Truss's appointment as prime minister uh, in its stupidity. I think he was a disastrous prime minister for foreign affairs uh, and, and will continue to be a disastrous foreign affairs uh, foreign minister. So, uh, yeah, I think I think that is a problem. We would all do well to remember that Hamas has nowhere near kept its side of the deal. But we are being told by the Egyptians that a deal is close to occurring, I believe. We are indeed those ceasefire talks, or indeed the, the deal is being thrashed out by the US, by the Qataris, by Egypt, by Israel and Hamas itself. One of the things that a recurring thing we've talked about this morning is the fact that actually, and you said right at the beginning, Israel's made some terrible mistakes. The real fear yeah. is radicalization, that you're going to yeah. radicalize more young people. And I wonder what you made of this report. This was a poll by the Henry Jackson Society. I don't know if you saw it over the weekend. This is about, and pertaining to UK Muslims, only one in four British Muslims believe that Hamas committed murder and rape. 46%, nearly half of British Muslims, said they sympathise with Hamas. And these tend to be younger, well-educated kids, kids with 
degrees. That is a real problem. Alan Mendoza, the executive director of the Henry Jackson Society, said the findings show the failure of the UK's counter-extremism policy. Something is going deeply wrong. We don't have a counter-extremism policy, and anyone who's shocked by those uh, by those percentages <laughs> clearly doesn't know their country very well. Uh, I've been saying this for 20, 25 years, um, that, that an awful lot of our Muslim population is simply not with us, is not on the same page as us culturally, politically, uh, uh, or in any way. Uh, because I notice as well, there's still the same amount of support for Sharia law. The same number of people wish to see the black flag of Islam or the green flag of Islam, whatever colour they have today, whatever day of the week it is, flying over the House of Commons. It is a huge, huge problem. And it's not helped by the morons who uh, infest uh, our counter-terrorism um, uh, uh, institutions, which <laughs> these days seem to buttress support for uh, groups like Hamas. So you may have seen uh, a few months ago uh, a bloke, uh, no, it's a woman, who joined one of the uh, uh, the de-radicalising uh, uh, institutions and was 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 given a, a lecture where they were told that Hamas was probably right. <laughs> you know, if we are doing that, then what can you expect? Well, so, Rod, uh, you mentioned Sharia law <laughs> there. I mean, it's astounding that 32% of UK Muslims believe this country should ha have Sharia law. And of that group, half of them, nearly half of them, said Jews have too much power over government policy in this country. Doesn't this actually speak to, to that statement we've heard before? We have failed. Multiculturalism in this country has failed. We have to be bound by common values. Yes, of course. Multiculturalism is a terrible creed because... Uh, it, it, it means that the community becomes fissiprous, it, it, it falls apart, we don't share the same values as, as other people who we've uh, uh, invited into the country. So yes, it, it's, 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 it's a, the, the trouble is that the general public misunderstands the word multiculturalism and takes it as the same as multiracialism, and it's not, of course. Uh, multicultural, uh, multiculturalism eschews the idea that we should have a common purpose in our country, for example, but well, we should. At the same time, of course, there's an overwhelming majority of British Jews and British Muslims who are integrated, whatever that actually means, in British society. It's certainly not speaking for the majority of people. Oh, no, no, sorry, 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 hang on a minute. How can an overwhelming majority of British Muslims be integrated if 47% think that Hamas isn't a terrorist organisation? How, how can that be possible? You can't, that's the problem we have. The people say rubbish like that, and it is rubbish, I'm sorry, uh, at the same time as seeing figures which show that exactly the opposite is true. I understand it's that. My, no, my point being that people, you know, uh, to, to say that, to criticise Islam itself as a religion, is a, is a peaceful religion. I'm just saying that I wouldn't want to judge people simply because they're Muslim. I would absolutely judge somebody on whether or not they supported Hamas, but you can't simply say that because somebody's Muslim, they believe X, Y, and Z, just as I wouldn't say the same thing about Jewish people. That's the only point I was trying to make. But I want to move on to more domestic issues now, Rod. Angela Rayner, she is under fire again for what either did or didn't happen in terms of her second home. She denies any responsibility. The Tories aren't going to let this one go, though, are they, anytime soon, Rod? No, they're not. And um, I have to say that the, the, the actual uh, machinations of, uh, of, of what Angela Rayner did with her second home and where she claimed for and so on, I, I'm not convinced that that's the actual nub of the story. The real story for me about Angela Rayner is a very competent, very good politician. The real nub for me is the thing which is so typical of Labour Party politicians, which is... They tell you to do one thing and then do something different themselves because uh, they can. Uh, and that was, you know, buying a council house, which she disagrees with, and selling it, which she disagrees with. She should not have done that uh, because she doesn't want anyone else to do it. And it ties in with people like, you know, uh, Baroness Chakrabarti sending her kids to 
uh, private schools when she doesn't want the population to send its children to private schools, say with Diane Abbott. Uh, and it, it's that which really rankles with the population, I think. Uh, I think you have hit the nail on the head there, Rod. And the fact is that Angela Rayner calling, saying, I'm not going to disclose my tax details, whilst at the same time saying, Act Shatta Murti had to disclose her. I mean, it's one yeah. rule for them and it's one, it's rule, one rule for, for the rest That's of us. Rod, uh, very erudite as usual. Thank you very much indeed. That's Rod Little. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. The Sun. Well